Hey, what's going on, family? You guys already know what day it is. It is the day after Sunday. Welcome to another Eat Up Mondays. Listen, we're going to skip the preliminaries today. We're going to jump right into our meal. I feel like you guys have come with an appetite. You're ready to dig right in, and so am I. So without further ado, guys, let's dig in. Last week, and if you have not heard last week's Eat Up Mondays, we talked about no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And in a second, I'm going to read that scripture again. But the reason why I wanted to bring this back up, because there was something that I mentioned in that video, I touched a little on uh, that is found in the book of Psalms. And it was talking about uh, how the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. And I'll show you where um, I touched on that at once I read this scripture in Isaiah, but I wanted to share that because I think it just seals what it is that we talked about last week about no weapon uh, formed against us shall prosper. And it just goes to show how God feels about us, right? His children. And really quickly, I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 54 and 17. That was the our foundation, ver our foundation verse for last week. And it reads as follows. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. First of all, we talked about where it says this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And that word heritage there means inheritance, right? So this is our inheritance when it talks about us being servants of the Lord. And it says, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Another thing that we learn about heritage is in scripture, the saints or the people of God are called his heritage because of the way that he cares for them. And also because it is him saying that they are mine, right? This is him claiming us. But when I had talked about, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord, that's when uh, what came to my remembrance was that Psalm uh, chapter 37 verses 39 through 40. And I talked a little bit about how in that scripture it talked about how the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. And I didn't get a chance to really explain how I wanted to, what it meant there by the salvation of, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about that this week, and it's just going to seal the deal on what it was we were saying last Monday when it came to the no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Psalm chapter 37, verses 39 through 40, and I'll read through it and then I'll talk about it. It says, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. In other words, it's a part of them, right? Don't forget that. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Confirmation. We should be leaning on him in the time of trouble, not on our own thinking, not on our own strength, not on somebody else's strength. When we know that we are really in some true trouble, we have to lean on the Lord and the Lord shall help them. It says he will help you. If you're if you're righteous and, and you are a part of God, you abide in God. He says that, listen, he shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. So two things we see here that if we are righteous, right? If we are of the righteous, our salvation is a part of them. But with that being said, we also have to trust in them. But the part I really want to deal with is what does it mean when it says, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord? Because many may hear that and they may think of when we get saved, right? Like when we come up and give our lives to the Lord or what God did by sending his only begotten son to, 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 you know, Know, to get rid of our sin, to get rid of death, you know, to to be hung and then uh, die and then, you know, rose again on the third day. That's not what it's talking about here, right? It's not talking about that salvation, how he redeemed us from our sins. It's talking about a different type of salvation. And we'll confirm it through other scriptures. But listen to this definition, because this is what it's talking about here. It says a saving or being saved from danger difficulty or destruction to rescue. Listen to that, to rescue. Think about what we're talking about. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's what we were talking about last week It's to rescue, protecting from loss or harm. So the salvation here that is talking about is talking about being rescued in a time of trouble. And that's why he said in that 
39 and 40 a verse. He says, he is their strength in the time of trouble and the Lord shall help them. He will help us. If we are a part of him, we abide in him. I don't want you guys to forget that. He will help you and deliver you. And he will deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. So we have to make sure that not only, uh, you know, that we feel good just because we like, oh, I'm, I'm a part of the Lord or I'm saved. I believe in the Lord. But you have to truly, truly trust him. Right. And where we get confirmation of that, he's talking about saving here as in, in the form of rescuing. We go back to Exodus 14 and 13 when the children of Israel was coming out of Egypt and Pharaoh was fast on their heels. Listen to what the scripture says. Listen to what Moses said to the people. It says, and Moses said unto the people, first thing, fear ye not. If you're going to trust in the Lord, you have to get rid of all fear. You can't be making movies in your head of what could happen and what might happen. And sometimes guess what? That can be really hard, but we have to find a way, right? To cast all of those vain imaginations down and truly put our trust in them. But it says, Moses says, fear ye not, stand still. Another thing he says to him, stand still. And he doesn't mean literally don't do anything at all, but don't be doing nothing that God didn't tell you to do, right? Let God do what he's supposed to do and whatever instruction he gave you to do, then that's what you need to do. When he says stand still here, he's not talking about just, just not moving and being frozen, but he's saying, listen, don't panic, don't fear, don't try to fix this yourself, don't try to figure it out. God got it under control. Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. There it is. See the rescuing of the Lord, which he will show you today. And we know that he's talking about physical rescuing because this is when Pharaoh was, was, was chasing them. Their back was against the wall. Their back was against the Red Sea. We know the story. They go across on dry land. Pharaoh follows behind them and is, and is swallowed up in the water. So this is what Moses is prophesying to them about. Like, listen, this is what is about to happen. So this is why we know that God and the scripture here is talking about a physical rescuing, but he says, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. So we know that he's talking about a physical rescuing in the time of trouble. And the reason why that is important, and I've been talking about this all year long, is because a lot of people have been experiencing a lot of trouble, it seems like, coming into this new year. And a lot of times that's just a test of faith. A lot of times that's just the enemy trying to rattle you because guess what? You came in this year believing you was going to do X, Y, and Z, trusting in the Lord that he was going to do X, Y, and Z, and then boom, you know, all hell breaks loose. You know, all of a sudden there's things going on contrary to what, to what you thought. But guess what? God says, don't panic, stand still, don't stress it and see the salvation of me today. See how I work this out in your life, no matter what it may be. Another confirmation that we get that salvation is talking about rescuing in Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 17. And many of you may know, may be familiar with this passage of scripture. This is where uh, Jehoshaphat called the fast in all Judah because the children of Moab and Ammon, you know, they were coming against him. They were coming to make war with him. And listen to what he says in Second Chronicle 20 and verse 17. And I encourage you, go back and read Exodus 14. Go back and read the whole uh, chapter of Second Chronicles in 20 so that you can get a better understanding of what was going on here. But listen to what he says in that 17th verse. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Uh-oh, set yourselves. Stand ye still. In other words, get in position. Stand still. Allow God to have his way, right? And see the salvation of the Lord with you. Oh, Judah and Jerusalem. And I love that. See the salvation of the Lord with you. Why does he say that? Because God is with us, right? He's a part of us. God dwells in us through his spirit. He's with us, right? He's always protecting us. He always has our best interests at heart. All we have to do is trust him, stand still, allow him to show off like he loves to do. But it says, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not. There it is again. Nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord will be with you. 
further confirmation that this is a physical rescuing here, you know, and we know that there's also a spiritual rescuing that happens for us. But here we're talking about when we are in those physical dangers, when we are in those physical times of possibly, you know, loss or harm. God says, don't even worry about it. I got it all under control. You belong to me, so I am going to take care of you. You don't have to stress anything. But what I need you to do is not find yourself in fear and worried about the different things that have come up against you. Why? Because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So I just wanted to drill this into you guys even more. You know that, listen, you don't have to sweat anything that the enemy is trying to do or anything that a human being is trying to do, whatever is happening, you don't have to sweat it because if you are of the righteous, then that means you're saving, you're rescuing is a part of the Lord. And what does that mean? When something is a part of somebody, that's something they can't get rid of, right? Like it's, it's attached to them. You know, he can't flat leave. He's not like a human being where, you know, if things are going good, they're fine with you to do whatever. But when it's not, they don't have anything for you. No, that's not how the Lord works. His, our salvation is a part of them. So that means when trouble comes, God is going to react. He's going to rescue us and make sure that we are fine because it is a part of him. And he made it that way so that we can have that confirmation and know that God has our back. But I pray that this encourage you guys, like it encouraged me and that it's encouraging so many, because like I said, there's so many people that I've talked to that I've listened to a lot of different things going on. But what we all have in common that are saved is God is going to work it out on our behalf. He's going to take care of whatever it may be, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, uh, whatever, whether it's mental, spiritual, God is going to work it out on our behalf. He is going to come to the rescue. Amen. So know that I love you guys. And until the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom. 